If there's one album that influenced how boom bap sounds today, it might be The Infamous. This album's hardcore sound was shaped by a few key producers, and there are some really ingenious beat making techniques that can still be useful today. And some of the stories about how The Infamous was made are just crazy. So today, let's break down how these genre defining beats were made and the key beat making ideas that you can use in your beats. But before we start, if you could do me a favor and hit like and subscribe, it really does help my channel out and I would really appreciate it. Thank you. So let's start off by breaking this album down by looking at the production behind Shook Ones. I got you stuck off the realness. We be the infamous. You heard According to Havoc, who was the main producer of the album, this beat was made early on in the album's creation. Shook Ones was like one of the first beats I made for that album. And Prodigy, the other member of Mob Deep, mentions that an EPS 16 was used to make many of the earlier beats on the album, like Shook Ones. And this is a key point, so keep this in mind. The fact that a keyboard sampler was used influenced one of the major sampling techniques on this album. Now before the infamous came out, the sound of hip hop was very different. Beats were far more jazzy, and the common shout and response choruses often had an uplifting feeling to them. But Havoc decided to do something different with the beats on the infamous. Now he still used jazz samples just like everyone else, but he went in a different direction. And this is where the EPS 16 comes in. As Havoc says, many of the producers at the time blatantly used samples as they were. He instead would take a small part of the sample, chop it up, and shift the tempo to make many of these beats. And this is why using a keyboard sampler was so important to the production on this album. By taking one small chop and playing it at different pitches, he was able to create the unique sound of this album. So let's break this technique down. Here I have the chop from the sample used in Shook Ones. And by the way, the story behind the sample is pretty amazing. It was discovered more than 15 years after the album even came out by a guy named Bronco. The reason it was unknown for so long was because of how well this sampling technique hides the actual sample, as you'll see here. So by using the ESP16, this piece of the sample got mapped across the keyboard like any other sound, all at different pitches. And what also happens when you do this is that the sample also gets stretched as you play different notes on the keyboard. So if I play this chop at this note, notice the timing of the notes playing is much faster compared to if I play this at a lower pitch where the notes will start to play a lot more slowly. The sample gets stretched out in order to change its pitch. And so Havoc played this piece of the sample at two different pitches, one at nine semitones lower than the original. And the next piece is played 14 semitones lower than the original. So by using a keyboard sampler, we get this pitch shifting technique where the notes have a unique timing depending on the different pitch that's used. But this isn't the only technique that Havoc used. As he mentions in this interview, filtering was also a key technique. That's how he was able to transform many of these samples. Or, you know, I would take a record that you wouldn't even imagine that it would sound like the way that I would have it end up being, you know what I mean? Because, you know, sometimes I would slow it down, filter it, and just make it sound grimy. So let's take what we've built and apply a filter to it next. What this does is restricts the frequencies of our sample. So by only focusing on the higher frequencies of this slowed down piano, it starts to sound less like a piano and almost like a guitar. And so by combining these two techniques, you can really change the characteristics of your sample or sound. And this is an idea that you can use when you make beats as well. And what I find equally as amazing is that Havoc actually didn't like this beat originally or the beat to Survival of the Fittest, which is another beat that uses a similar sampling technique. He actually wanted to delete both of these beats. But luckily someone was always there to stop him from doing this. Makes you wonder how much gold producers have just deleted over the years. By the way, just a quick side note, if you want to learn how to make beats that are also absolute gold, think about checking out my online beat making program, Better Beat Maker. It's for people who don't have any background in music but still want to learn how to make amazing sounding beats. 
Lots of people who've tried all the other courses say that this is the best beat making experience that they've ever had. So make sure to apply today if you're interested. The link is in the description box below if you want to check it out after this video. Now Havoc wasn't the only producer involved in shaping the sound of this album. Years before the album came out, Q-Tip had actually met Mob Deep while they were trying to get noticed. Q-Tip came out the building. We asked him to listen to us and he stopped. He was like, all right. He listened to our shit. He was like, yo, I like y'all. He was like, come and come in the office. I'm gonna introduce you to some people. And then years later, after Mob Deep's first album, Juvenile Hell, flopped, Q-Tip was called in and asked to help them with the production on the infamous. Yo, we had, you know, we really want you to work with Mob, you know. I was like, yeah, and Scott was my man and Maddie's my man. So I was like, yeah, yeah. So we, we met up. And some of the ideas that Q-Tip brought to the album also really helped it become the classic that it is today. As noted, his biggest involvement on this album were probably the drums and helping the beats sound much bigger through some key mixing ideas. And these ideas are really useful techniques no matter what type of beat you want to make. An example of this is Give Up The Goods. The drums sound great on this beat because of how big they sound. And a way to get your drums to sound this good and this big is by using a technique called New York Compression. Sounds complicated, but it's actually really simple. Here's how to do this. What you want to do is take your drum loop, duplicate it, and then compress it to get a much fatter version. Then you have the dry original version playing alongside this newly compressed version. So here I have a drum break that I just made. And notice the drum break is peaking around minus three decibels if we just left it like this. Now what I'm gonna do is route this drum break to another insert. What this basically does is duplicate the audio. So now we have two versions of the same drum loop playing, but we can affect each version differently. So I'm gonna go into my second layer, bring down the volume because it's a bit loud right now, and then add some effects to compress it and really emphasize the color. And you'll notice that we're actually still peaking at the exact same level, but now we have this much larger sounding drum break, as you can hear if we compare them back to back. Now one additional effect that I didn't show you is adding a slight bit of reverb before your compressors. That way the reverb also gets compressed and emphasized and that's how we get that huge cavernous sounding snare. These two production techniques are the core ideas behind what makes the Infamous so special and unique when it came out and still sound as rough and bleak today. And that's why this is actually my favorite album of all time. A little bit of useless information there for you. So now let's take these two techniques and build our own beat using them. We'll start off by finding a similar piano sample. And we'll bring it into our beat. I've isolated a few sparse piano notes from the intro of this sample. Next, I'm gonna create a loop using the sample chop, but at multiple different pitches, and then I'm gonna add a filter as well. Then we'll add in the same drums that we just built using Q-Tip's production technique to make them sound huge. Then we add in our bass and a few extra sounds, and all of a sudden, we have a hardcore 90s boom bap beat on our hands. So those are some of the major production techniques behind the infamous that made it sound so good. Now if you want to know how to make boom bap beats, check out the video next to me. I show you some core ideas that you need to know if you want to make boom bap. And again, for those interested, a link to my online course Better Beatmaker is also next to me. If you've enjoyed this video, hit like and subscribe. If you have an album that you want me to break down, leave a comment down below. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys next week.